He's Matt Hasselbeck, former NFL quarterback, led the Seahawks to uh, the Super Bowl, and a former ESPN NFL analyst. What do you make of these, uh, like that coaching decision to leave BC to be a defensive coordinator with the Packers? Yeah. Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm glad I get to be the Mercedes Benz guest, by the way. That's a pretty, <laughs> that's a good feeling, right? <laughs> Uh, no, listen, it was shocking, like as a Boston College alum and as a dad of a kid who just went through the recruiting process and Boston College is one of the kind of the final schools that he was deciding between. It's really surprising. But at the same time, having just been through that recruiting process as a dad, it's a lot, man, like college football. I call it professional college football right now. It it never ends. So whether you're talking NIL transfer portal recruiting recruiting your own kids not to leave uh some schools are more committed to spending money um to go get guys to keep guys uh some schools are more committed to you know honestly this next whatever the future of professional college football looks like versus the amateurism i think it's tough i i I was surprised. I think you'll see more coaches uh, kick and claw and scratch to get their way back into the NFL. Could you see Bill Belichick entertaining the idea of coaching Harvard football? Yeah. Yeah, I've never heard anyone say that. But yeah, I, I really actually thought that the most surprising thing he would probably try to do is go coach men's lacrosse somewhere. Yeah. Like, I think he would love that challenge as long as it lines up with his summers at Nantucket. Sure. Uh, the Harvard thing is really interesting, though, because as you may or may not know, there are a lot of restrictions. Uh, there's basically... Uh, you don't have the guys in the summer the way the Division One programs do. Uh, that the amount of hours you have, so you could like coach football, and in theory still have a life outside of it. So, pretty good idea, Dan. I, I, I like I like where your head's at. Well, Tim Murphy, what he just uh, retired after thirty years. Bills in the neighborhood. Um, maybe he would like that. You're not dealing with transfer portal or NIL as much as you would someplace else. And it would allow him to coach in a conference that he would have great respect for. So I don't know. Very good. You should be his agent. I know there's some coaches on staff there that have been there a long time that, um, that understand how to work with admissions there. And so that's a whole nother, yeah. that's a whole nother beast that you have to deal with at some schools. But I was wondering, I don't know if Bill Belichick will coach in the NFL game again. And the reason why I say this is one more year, he's going to be 73. Who's turning over their organization to somebody who, how, how long is he going to be there? Um, Someone then, who wants to win. <laughs> well, I, I, like I thought Philadelphia was going to go after him and replace Nick Sirianni. Uh, at Atlanta, they wanted him until the front office probably said, well, wait a minute, he's going to take our jobs or our jobs are in jeopardy. And then they didn't want him. Washington at the last, you know, 11th hour reaches out to him without an interview, but they reach out to him. So I don't, I don't know if I see a franchise going, yep, yeah, let's bring in Bill. I think you need to look at the decision maker. Like if it's the GM, if the GM is kind of the decision maker, like, of course, they're not going to say, oh, yeah, hey, come and be my boss, please. <laughs> you know, but if it's an owner who's like, hey, I've had enough. I just want to pay a large sum of money and I want you to just do it. Go bring me a great football team. I will go do the business stuff. Like, just do it. And if 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 you kind of find one of those types of owners and Coach Belichick sees a situation where the quarterback is already a settled thing, I, I, I say yes. I say yes. Yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm just. I was curious about it because the more I thought about it, the more I'm thinking uh, if it didn't work this time, Vrabel didn't get a job. That's tough. You know, it's it's musical chairs, right? And there's there's like a there's a point of emphasis right now for like the young, hip, cool, analytics, streamlining, you know, all the kind of stuff. The league's getting a lot younger. You see Pete Carroll get pushed out. You see, you know, Bill Belichick get pushed out. Like that's the trend this year. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like if Kyle Shanahan wins the Super Bowl, then sure, that trend's probably going to continue, like the new age stuff. But if Andy Reid wins the Super Bowl, then it might be a trend. It's a very copycat league. Then the trend might be like, you know what? We don't need to reinvent the wheel. Football, a great leader, a great football coach is a great football coach. Let's copy that model. 
He's Matt Hasselbeck, former NFL quarterback, former NFL analyst at uh, the Mothership. If I told you this would be the uh, Super Bowl matchup back in August, you would have said what? You say, oh, that's a boring pick. That's not a hot take. I agree with you, but we're looking for a hot take. And that's, I think, what everybody does at the beginning of the year. They want to be the person that bets on the underdog horse or whatever. But no, for sure. Like these two teams, these are you know, probably the, the the best team in the NFC last year who, you know, outside of Brock Purdy's injury, uh, would had a great chance to be in the Super Bowl. And in this year, I mean, Andy Reid, Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, um, of course, safe bet, safe bet. Pick out the weakness of both of these teams. The weakness, I think, of the... I shouldn't say the weakness. I think the kryptonite. Like, if you want to beat the Chiefs, there's one thing you have to do. Like, there's you can't beat them unless you do this. Unless you eliminate Travis Kelsey, you need to take him out of the – you need to find other ways to lose the game. Find other ways to lose. He needs to be the guy. And I'll just tell you, like, every time I played against the Chiefs in my career – or a team like the Chiefs. This is how it would go down. You'd have a scout team player, probably one of your better wide receivers, play tight end all week in practice, wear a jersey with the number eight and seven, and sometimes it was two different guys, and it was like, we don't care what happens. 87 is not touching the ball in practice. For two weeks now, it'll be that way, or it should be that way. And that's the whole emphasis. And then you go watch like a game, like the Buffalo Bills game, and they're just like dropping coverage and they're just letting Kelsey run free. Like, that's not it. Like Jacksonville learned the hard way last year. The teams who've done a good job against Kansas City, they eliminate, they make them win another way, some other way. So that's, I think that's the biggest thing. And then for San Fran, I think health, like they've got some star players. They just got to be healthy. Brock Purdy's got to be healthy. Debo, Kittle, uh, they have the weapons. But uh, to me, Kelsey is like, if you want to pick one thing, it's got to be Travis. Was Tom Brady a game manager? He was a game. What's the right word? He was a game commander. He was a game controller. Okay, he, so we got to change the, the the word manager. That's that's manage, the problem. Manager, like manager, reminds me of like a grocery store clerk from like a kind of like a <laughs> mediocre movie that I watched or something. Like uh, I need a manager on a aisle four. <laughs> like no, I, I I want I want someone in charge. I want to I want a commander, a controller, someone who dictates. What's going to happen in the game? Okay. Tom Brady had the ability to win a game going over the top to Randy Moss. He had the ability to win the game by a death by a thousand paper cuts to James White. And he intimidated defensive coordinators. Defensive coordinators, like Peyton Manning was this way too. Defensive coordinators would be afraid to do certain things, blitzes or whatever. It could be like, oh no, he's going he's gonna to see it. He's going to dink and dunk, like whatever it is. So I, I think, yeah, change the word. So Brock Purdy, is he a game manager? He's a baller. I don't care. <laughs> I, I listen. Okay. Honestly, like just even this morning, I went back and rewatched. Uh, I went back and rewatched all of his completions from the last two playoff games. Dude is a freaking beast. I'm sorry. I know he doesn't look like a beast. I know like if he had a, we were at the combine, you strip down to your underwear, whatever. You're not going to be like, whoa, look how tall he is. Look how strong, like, look how, ch like probably not. He's like a he's like one of the best I don't know shortstops I've ever seen. He catches it, he's smooth, balls on point, runner's ball, accurate on time. But he does I don't care what anybody says, and I don't even know if people say this, but he has wow throws. He absolutely has wow throws. Let me rewind that. Let me see that. Wow. But I think the thing that he and Patrick Mahomes both don't get enough credit for, people want to I don't know. I, I don't think people realize what great runners these quarterbacks are. And they're not like they're not running quarterbacks, but when their team absolutely needs it, they will run for a first down and absolutely break the back of a defense. Ironically, we already know that about Mahomes. But like even in this playoff run, uh uh Purdy's done it more than Mahomes. And we know how good Mahomes is. So um no, that I I think Mo Moxie, swagger. Um, instinct, instinctual, on time, rhythm, accuracy, all the things. That's why these are the two teams playing for it all because their quarterbacks are that way. 
If Mahomes wins another Super Bowl MVP, does that do anything status-wise, pecking order, anything historically? Sure, of course. Um, you know, to me, just what they've already done. You know, everyone said, oh, no one will ever be as good as Joe Montana. Then all of a sudden, Tom Brady came along. Then everyone said, oh, no one will ever do what Tom Brady did. And I, I agree. But then here's Mahomes, like in the prime of his career, doing it. Like this dude, I, I say this sometimes to people. People are like, oh, can you believe how long uh, Tom Brady played? It's not even how long he played. It's how many games he played in that stretch. Like this dude played 20 something. He played over a, a full season of playoff games. So like when a, other NFL quarterbacks who throw for a ton of yards, they're over in the Bahamas playing golf and during the playoffs, Tom Brady is still playing football. That's what Mahomes has done. I mean, this dude's like, he never gets a break. He's got a short off season every season. So there, he's ridiculous. He's so good. Uh, Andy Reid's so good. Um, you know who's underrated, though, I just got to tell you, is uh, Steve Spagnuolo, the defensive oh coordinator God. for the Chiefs. Yeah. And I, and, and I don't know. Like, I played against him when he was with the, the St. Louis Rams. I played against him when he was with the New York Giants, with those great Michael Strahan, OCU Minore, Antonio Pierce defenses. Um to me, he is he, like when I think of Spags, I think of like Dick LeBeau, you know, and because I, I don't know what people think of Spags. I think it's almost like an afterthought because how good the offense is. But no, this this dude deserves the same amount of respect as a defensive coordinator as you'd give someone like Dick LeBeau, which is kind of like the highest compliment I can think of. Yeah. And I, I've asked our guest uh, the last couple of days, if you're San Francisco, are you more concerned about Kansas City's defense or Patrick Mahomes? Kansas City's defense is really good. Here's the thing. You need to be concerned about Travis Kelsey. Like, that needs to be priority number one. He's the guy. Where's Waldo? Find him every play. Like, that's our whole thing. Wait, We're so not Kelsey is one, then Mahomes two, or the defense? Defense is really good. I think this is the great thing about San Fran, why they're so good, is they don't care who you are on defense. They don't care. They're going to do them. It's like they got this like John Wooden mindset. You know what? We're going to do a shift. A lot of teams shift and a lot of teams motion. Watch the 49ers. They'll do a shift and a motion so much. Shift, motion, set hut. Defense has to think. We're not thinking. We're on offense. We know it's just a shift, motion. We do this all the time. Shift, motion, set hut. Shift, motion, set hut. The defense is over like, I got him. You got him. You got it. Uh, Debo, C-Mac, Kittle. Like what? So I think that's the beauty of it. I think the thing that you you – that's different about Kansas City right now is the run game. Isaiah Pacheco. Like, again, another thing we don't talk about, but um, Pacheco's the real deal. I mean, he runs angry. He runs well. They're committed to it more than I think they have been. And, th you know, that's a way to close out a game. I don't know. It, it's super fun. I, I love San Fran. There's so much to like about San Fran. I love Kansas City. They're an all-time team. Like, you know, when did you grow up watching football? When, when, when Kansas City and Mahomes were doing their thing? It's like a – it's how you define an era, kind of. Yeah. So super, super fun. Should be an awesome game. Yeah, I just, you know, uh, Mahomes has got into the Brady stratosphere. I don't bet against him. I just, if he's out there, I can't bet against him. Yeah, if I was coaching, if I was coaching, if I was coaching Patrick, I would say, Patrick, the only thing that can beat you is you. Like, don't get bored. You know, he won the Super Bowl. He won his last Super Bowl. Um, I made this analogy last year with a three wood the whole year. You know, he didn't have he didn't have Tyreek. And he was like, you know what? I'm putting the driver away. I'm going to use my three wood when I'm I, I need to more. I'm going to spread it around. I'm going to use everybody. And that's what he did. He used everybody. He let the offense work for him. And I don't know. It's 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 special. But uh, I think he's his he's the only thing that could stop him in a weird way. Great to talk to you. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Always. Always a pleasure. Did your son get NIL? Did, did UCLA offer up anything there when they recruited? I, I, I think they know how much money I made in my career, so we never got offered any NIL. <laughs> well, you don't need NIL. You, know? you, you told your son you're not getting NIL money from UCLA? He's been on NIL since he was born. <laughs> Who are we kidding? Come on. Come on. Thank you, Matt. All right. It's, See uh, Matt Hasselbeck, former NFL quarterback.